Hello everyone. My name is Ali Akbar. Today me and Mr. Vivek are going to give a brief overview about the various components which makes up an whole refrigeration system. The various topics which we are going to discuss today are compressor, condenser, expansion valve and evaporator. Now before moving further, let us first discuss where this components lies on a refrigeration cycle. first comes the compressor next is condenser after condenser comes the thermostatic expansion valve and at the end evaporator where the actual cooling takes place after evaporator the cycle repeats itself we will begin our discussion with the compressor the compressor is also known as the heart of a refrigeration system it keeps the refrigerant flowing through the system at specific rate of flow and at a specific pressure the compressor located between the evaporator and condenser has two important lines a suction line that is a low pressure line and a discharge line which is a high pressure line this suction line is the line that pulls the low pressure and temperature refrigerant from the evaporator and the discharge line is the line that compresses and pushes that super heat vapor to the condenser it creates a pressure difference in the air system by pulling in low pressure low temperature vapor from the evaporator to the suction line and increasing it to a high pressure high temperature super heat vapor this pressure difference is what makes the refrigerant flow in a refrigeration cycle also the high temperature is caused due to the compression of the vapor particles of the refrigerant which increases the entropy and thus internal energy of the system causing the rise in the temperature the compressor is basically situated at the bottom part of your refrigerator Reciprocating compressor is used to compress the refrigerant in domestic refrigerator. This compressor is hermetically sealed type. Hermetic sealed compressor is one in which the two half are sealed by welding or brazing. A real hermetic reciprocating compressor is shown in the figure. Electric motor and reciprocating mechanism are placed inside this housing. here the reciprocating mechanism which we can see from here is that there is a piston it's a cylinder and uh, com reciprocating compression takes place over this area now the next topic which comes after the compressor is the condenser the refrigerant output which we get from the compressor will be at high pressure and high temperature vapor state this refrigerant then flows to the condenser as we can see in this diagram when the hot refrigerant vapor discharged from the compressor travels through the condenser the cool air or water flowing through the condenser coil absorbs enough heat from the vapor to cause it to condense as we can see the cooling water is flowing through the condenser here the gas condenses to a liquid which gives off its heat to the outside air thus at the outlet of condenser we get high pressurized liquid at low temperature as we can see in this diagram also the compressor is situated at the bottom part of your refrigerator the output of compressor basically contains the high pressure high temperature refrigerant this high pressure high temperature refrigerant then flows through the condenser coil where it gets condensed and at the output of condenser we get high pressurized low temperature liquid refrigerant at this stage in the refrigeration cycle high pressure liquid refrigerant will flow down the liquid line through a filter dryer that is designed to prevent contamination from flowing through the system and on to the metering device 
which brings us to our next topic that is the thermostatic expansion valve expansion valve comes after the condenser a thermal expansion valve is a component that controls the amount of refrigerant released into the evaporator thereby controlling superheat thermal expansion valve are often referred to generically uh, as metering device expansion valves are flow restricting device that causes a pressure drop of the working fluid the thermostatic expansion valve performs the following functions first it reduces the pressure of the refrigerant the first and the foremost function of the thermostatic expansion valve is to reduce the pressure of the refrigerant from the condenser pressure to the evaporator pressure in the condenser the refrigerant is at very high pressure the thermostatic expansion valve has a constriction or orifice due to which the pressure of the refrigerant passing through it drops down suddenly to the level of the evaporator pressure due to this the temperature of the refrigerant also drops down suddenly and it produces cooling effect inside the evaporator the second function of a thermostatic expansion valve is to keep the evaporator active the thermostatic expansion valve allows the flow of the refrigerant as per the cooling load inside it at higher load the flow of the refrigerant is increased and at the lower load the flow is reduced it won't happen that the load on the evaporator is high and the flow of the refrigerant is low thereby reducing the capacity of the capacity of the evaporator the thermostatic expansion valve allows the evaporator to run as per the requirement and there won't be any wastage of the capacity of the evaporator the tev that is the thermostatic expansion valve constantly modulates the flow to maintain the superheat for which it has been adjusted the valve needle as shown in the figure over here this is known as the valve needle the valve needle remain, remains open during the steady state operation the the size of the opening or the position of the needle is related to the pressure and temperature of the evaporator there are basically three main parts of the expansion valve that regulates the position of this needle first is sensor bulb which is located over here a sensor bulb at the end of the evaporator this is the evaporator coil so the sensor bulb is situated at the end of the evaporator coil this sensor bulb monitors the temperature change of the evaporator this change in temperature creates a change in pressure on the diaphragm which is shown in th- over here and our third component is needle valve which we have which we have already discussed now in order to explain this thermostatic expansion valve i have uh, i want to present you one example if the temperature in the evaporator increases the pressure in the diaphragm increases causing the needle to lower lowering the needle allows more of the working fluid into the evaporator to absorb heat the pressure at the inlet of the evaporator affects the position of the needle and prevents the working fluid from flowing back into the compressor since the pressure before the valve is higher than the pressure after the valve the working fluid naturally flows into the evaporator the pressure at the a- inlet of the evaporator acts on the diaphragm there is also a spring provided providing a constant pressure closing the valve needle the spring is this one the spring constantly restricts the amount of working fluid entering the evaporator an increase of flow rate lowers the temperature of the evaporator and allows for more heat absorption now can be described in this figure it has an adjustment screw to adjust the spring load it has a diaphragm and it has a needle in reality an expansion valve looks like this this is the sensing bulb and this is the expansion valve 
now moving forward there are basically two main types of thermal expansion valve one is internally or external one is internally equalized and second is externally equalized the difference between externally and internally equalized valve is that is how the evaporator pressure affects the position of the needle that is to say in internally equalized valve the evaporator pressure against the diaphragm is the pressure at the inlet of the evaporator whereas in externally equalized valve the evaporator pressure against the diaphragm is the pressure at the outlet of the evaporator externally equalized thermostatic expansion valve compensate for any pressure drop through the evaporator the high pressure liquid refrigerant entering the expansion valve is quite warm this may be verified by feeling the liquid line at its connection to the expansion valve the liquid refrigerant leaving the expansion valve is quite cold the orifice within the valve does not remove heat but only reduces the pressure heat molecules contained in the liquid refrigerant are thus allowed to spread as the refrigerant moves out of the orifice under a greatly re- reduced pressure the liquid refrigerant is at its coldest as it leaves the expansion valve and enters the evaporator i hope you all got the idea about the expansion valve if you have any doubts please free- feel free to ask me in the comment section now moving forward the last component which remains is evaporator this is the part of the refrigeration system that is doing the actual cooling because its function is to absorb heat into the refrigeration system the evaporator is placed in the area to be cooled in the evaporator the refrigerant enters at very low pressure and temperature after passing through the expansion valve this refrigerant absorbs the heat from the substance that is to be cooled so the refrigerant gets heated while the substance gets cooled even after cooling the temperature of the refrigerant leaving the evaporator is less than that of the substance the refrigerant leaves the evaporator in vapor state as we can see the refrigerant the refrigerant which is leaving the evaporator is in the vapor state mostly superheated this vapor state refrigerant is absorbed by the compressor the evaporator consists of finned tubes which absorbs heat from the air blown through a coil by a fan fins and tubes are made of metals with high thermal conductivity to maximize heat transfer the refrigerant vaporizes from the heat it absorbs in the evaporator in the domestic refrigerator the evaporator are commonly known as the freezer since the ice is made in this compartment in case of the window and split air conditioners and other air conditioning system where the evaporator is directly used for cooling the room air it is called as the cooling coil in case of large refrigeration plant and central air conditioning plants the evaporator is also known as the chiller since these systems are first used to chill the water which then produces the cooling effect the evaporator works the opposite of the condenser here refrigerant liquid is converted to gas absorbing heat from the air in the compartment this heat is then carried by the refrigerant from the evaporator as a low pressure gas through a hose or line to a low side of the compressor where the whole refrigeration cycle is repeated Thank you very much for staying with us till the end. I hope you guys understood this lecture and if you have any doubts please feel free to ask any question in the comment section. If you like our lecture please do like and subscribe and share our video with your colleagues. For our next lecture we are going to look what Kelvin Planck and Clausius has to say about the refrigeration cycle. Please hit like and subscribe button below. See you all in our next lecture. Till then have a nice day. Bye bye.